welcome. In this video, I'm just going to continue working with the linear hashing framework. Uh, and we're just going to start with an empty framework, as I've got uh, depicted here. Uh, we're going to add these entries in. And, and so we're going to do that. Um, so I'm going to get us started off. Now remember, uh, when we start out, we're going to be in a round. I'm going to call my round round I. In this case, it's going to be round zero. Um, and in a round, we're going to keep track of a few things. For, first of all, uh, we might want to keep track of um, which hash functions we're going to use. Uh, so we're going to use hash function 0 and hash function 1 out of our family. So let's remember what those hash functions are. Well, our family was uh, equal to k mod uh, 2 to the i. So in this case, it's going to be 1 and then k mod 2 for our second function, 2 to the power 1. Uh, so remember, hash function 0 is sort of silly. It only ever gives us zeros. It's not really worth using. Uh, and what that means is we're going to classify our first four entries uh, right into this bucket. This is technically bucket 0, but I'm going to leave it just empty as null right now. Hash function 0 basically uh, is saying there's only one bucket, put everything in that same bucket. So we're going to do that. Uh, so 11, 4, 21, 25. So we, ha we handle, handle our first four entries. And now we can move on to our next entry, uh, entry 5. Placing that in creates an overflow page. And we got 15 placed in here. Um, again, causes an overflow page. Now, actually, I didn't mention it at the top of the video, but I want to use the same uh, strategy for our linear hashing as we did in, in our last video, which means uh, you see here I've got four entries in my bucket. Also, I've created an overflow page, but also I'm, I'm going to use as our rule, our, our schedule for splitting, to be uh, uh, split a, a node whenever we create an overflow page. So we've just created one, so this should technically create a split for us. Now what we want to do here, uh, as I also mentioned, maybe we should keep track of a few other things. Maybe we should keep track of our next, and usually this is going to be an index of a bucket, uh, uh, but we can think of it as a pointer as well, so sometimes we draw it uh, just sort of pointing at a bucket, in which case this is, we only have one bucket, this is obviously the bucket we need uh, to split, um, but we also uh, usually want to keep track of the last bucket we're going to split in this round, and so this is the only bucket, so it's the last bucket we'll split in this round, so uh, we'll know that when we're done this split, uh, we must be done our round. So let's, let's do the split first. Now in the split, What's going to happen is we're going to create a new bucket, and it goes on the end uh, of our list of buckets. So, uh, and the bucket that we're going to uh, create, we're going to copy down whatever was written in the original bucket. Well, there was nothing there. I did that on purpose so I could follow a particular strategy I do when I'm splitting, which is I copy down what was written there, nothing, and then I write a leading zero and a leading one. So a leading zero in the original bucket, a leading one in the split image, and if I'm doing it right and I'm splitting things according to the right right schedule, then I should get my buckets in order. So I had zero and now I have one. Okay, so I'm going to create create the next bucket. So again, unlike extendable hashing where we have some uh, you know pointers all all over the place, I don't even need these arrows here. I'm just using them uh, to indicate that the next entry just belongs in the next uh, chunk of memory. Okay. So now, what are we going to do? We're going to split the entries that we have in this bucket using our new, our second hash function, hash function 1, which gives us mod 2. And of course, mod 2 is just evens or odds. The even elements ending up in bucket 0 and the odd elements ending up in bucket 1. So I'll move the odd elements down first. That's easy. We get 11, uh, the 21, uh, the 25, and the 15. And we actually get lucky here that the 4 remains up there, or we would have brought the whole overflow page down as well. It's here at this point I want to reiterate that when we bring an overflow page down uh, in that m manner, if we, had, uh, if we had an overflow page in the original bucket and then it appears, 
again, either in the original bucket or in the split image, we do not treat that as a case to trigger another split. Uh, so we don't want to cascade splits in linear hashing. We, we, we may get that case in an extendable hashing, but we try and avoid that here. Uh, all right, let's update bucket zero as well. All right, after the update, uh, the form moves over and we've got rid of our overflow page. Okay, so uh, that ad was for our 15. Um, the other thing we should note is that normally we would increment our next pointer, but remember that was the last the last one in our round, so now we should update what round we're in as well. All right, so what round are we in now? We're now in round one. That means we're using hash functions h1 and h2. h1 is mod 2 to the 1 or mod 2 and h2 is mod 2 squared or mod 4. Okay, The next bucket in the beginning of the round is reset to 0 and the last bucket, well, there's a few ways we can calculate it. It's going to be uh, 2 to the i minus 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. Or we can just go look up here. It should be the last one written. Okay, And sometimes I keep track of that at the beginning of the round so when I get there at the end of the round I know it's time to, to update to the next round. That way I don't miss updating to, to the next round, which is a common error. Okay, so our next pointer is still pointing here. We have it updated with our reference down below as well. We can continue now with 14. Okay, 14, putting it through our hash function 1, mod 2, that's even odds, gives us even, even is 0. Keeping in mind here, zero is still less than or greater than or equal to our next pointer. Because our next pointer is pointing at zero, we never actually have to bring in hash function two at this point uh, to do a secondary classification. Uh, we might in a second after another split, but let's continue. We did a 14 here. That was evens. Uh, but now we're on to odds again. Uh, one is an odd, and so what happens is we're going to get an overflow page. All right, uh, good example. Uh, because we get this overflow page, remember that's going to trigger our split, but unlike extendable, extendable we try and split bucket one here, uh, in linear we have to split in order, so we check our next pointer, check our next pointer, it's pointing at zero, uh, so we're going to split bucket zero. Now, again, the way we're going to do that, I, the way I, I like to do this, I copy down the zero, I put a leading zero in front of the original bucket, I put a leading one in front of the new bucket. Now when I do that, there's a few ways we can keep track of the next pointer here. One way is you'll notice this bucket one doesn't have a leading bit, it only has one bit. To me, in my notation, if I follow this notation, that means that bucket still needs to be split in this round. Also I can tell because this bucket two has two bits, that this must be the last bucket to split in this round because after I split this bucket, I'll get 0, 1, and 1, 1. I will have finished the round with four buckets. So again, using this notation uh, helps me keep track. I don't need to keep, keep my notes down here. However, I will keep my notes down there as well. All right, so in this case, we've now updated our next pointer, pointing at 1, uh, to, to agree with after the split, although we haven't actually finished the split yet. So let's finish the split. We're going to create bucket two. And now for bucket two, we need to go ahead and apply hash function number two to our two uh, values, our keys. Uh, our first key is four. Four mod four, simple as that as, as can be, that's zero. 14 mod four, however, is uh, two, not zero. Now remember, we knew these were both even, so they could only come out as zero or two. So 14 is two. So it moves down here. Okay, all right, so we did a split because we added that one. We didn't actually eliminate the overflow page, however. However, we, we notice we got a lot of room in these buckets now. Okay, let's keep going. Nine. On the nine, we're gonna run through hash function number one, evens odds, it tells us odd. One is equal to our next pointer, so that we, we can trust that first hash function. That means we haven't split this bucket yet, so we don't have to run it through the second hash function. So we'll put a nine here. What else do we notice here? We notice in this step that we've added a nine to the overflow page, but we haven't created a new overflow page. So we actually aren't going to trigger another split here. This is somewhat beneficial for us, actually. 
um, we know we probably would have split at this point, uh, split this bucket at this point if we had done extendable hashing, for instance. Uh, let's run the next example, 20, run it through my hash function, mod 2, that says even, that points at bucket 0. Now, 0 is less than our next pointer, which means we can't trust it. This is a bucket we've already split. Our, our value, 20, maybe belongs here, but maybe it belongs in this 2 bucket. The only way we'll know is by running it through hash function number 2. So we run it through hash function number 2, mod 4. Uh, 20 mod 4 gives us 0 again, so it looks like we're doing fine. What about our 2? The 2 looks different. Again, if we plug it through our first hash function, evens odds, it's going to tell us evens. If we trust it, we'll put it here, but notice that we shouldn't trust our even odd hash function because when we put 2 through our second hash function, h2 uh, mod 4, we get 2, and that tells us we should go in bucket 2. So 2 belongs here, of course. 17. 17, put it through hash function 1, is odd. We can trust odd, so we place it here. Okay, 26. 26 again, we're seeing a pattern now. Put it through this function, we get even. Even is less than 1, so we have to push it through uh, hash function number 2. 26 mod 4 is actually 2. So it goes here. All right, 13. Well, that's an odd one, and we know already we can trust odd. So it fills up this overflow page. Okay, we've got a lot of odd, but we haven't triggered a, an actual uh, split on that page yet. Uh, it looks like now we're going to get into that situation when we add our 7, because 7, also odd, we can trust that, is going to cause another overflow page. So our new overflow page will add the 7 on, but that will trigger a split. Now we're getting a little bit lucky, it looks like. Well, maybe not lucky, we, we're almost destined for this case, um, that we filled up this bucket so much that we'll trigger a split and we're actually going to split that bucket. So let's do it in, the, in step by step again. I'm going to first copy down one, put a leading zero, put a leading one. Okay. Noticing we've all got two bits now, that means we're at the end of the round. So let's update uh, our round now. Well, I'll just update the uh, next pointer here. Uh, we're entering into round two, but we actually still need this hash function here. Uh, to do our split. So let's go ahead and do our split. For our split, for each of our, our numbers now, we need to know is it going to be uh, mod 4, is it a 1, or is it a 3? Okay, so let's go one at a time. Now 11 is 8 plus 3, so it's a 3. And maybe before I, maybe before I even finish this off here, I'm going to anticipate something. Notice that we have 9 entries here. Even if we get the most even split, that's going to be one bucket with four, one with five. That means there will be another overflow page. So we're not going to eliminate both these pages. However, what that does mean is we uh, remember we will not trigger another split as a result of this. Okay, so let's keep going. So our 11 moved. Our 21 is a 20 plus one. So it stays put, and I'll just bump it down one. A 25, that's 24 plus 1. So let's bump it down 1 as well. What about our 15? 15, that looks like 12 plus 3. So that's a 3. Our 1 is a 1, clearly, and our 9 is also an, a 1. Our 17 is also a 1, and our 13 is a 1 as well, but our 7 is a 3. So after the split, it looks like we didn't get an exactly even split. We got six and three, and that's you know that's fine. We still have one overflow page, but we some we did sort of manage to over, uh, eliminate the other, uh, the second overflow page, which was not necessarily uh, guaranteed for any such split where we had those two extra pages. But at least in this case, because we actually had nine, uh, uh, we saw that we could get five and four, uh, but we probably couldn't get worse than that. So. Uh, we're guaranteed to have one, but we are also guaranteed to eliminate one. Okay, we did the split. What else have we done? I, I sort of paused our changing of the guard here in the middle, so let's finish fixing the round. 
All right, so updating the round, we notice that we're now on the hash functions two and three, so that's mod four and eight. Um, and our, our next has been updated to zero, we already did that, uh, but our last uh, is now uh, three, and I've written that in binary because that's how I'm writing my buckets up above. Okay, we only have two extra entries to add here. Um, we have 24, let's try that one. Uh, 24 is, uh, we'll put it through our hash function two, uh, mod four uh, is zero and uh, zero is equal to our next, so we can trust it. We can trust them all until we do a split. So 24 actually goes here. 30 uh, mod uh, four is going to be two. Uh, so it goes here. Again, we can trust it because it's greater than our next pointer. Okay. So actually those two went in pretty easily without any additional effort. Uh, so we did manage to do a couple different splits here in this example. Um, so if you do want to practice uh, doing uh, some more work with your linear hashing, I recommend doing uh, just as we've done here. Uh, take yourself some random numbers. Um, I've done 16 here. You'll notice 16 should fit into sort of four buckets pretty easily, and we've got that working here. Although we see we overflowed a little bit on this side, so that might cause more or less splitting depending on whether we're using extendable or linear hashing for our practice. So 16 is a good number. I might say pick somewhere between 16 and say 32 or you know go up to 64 although now you're getting a little bit cumbersome. Uh, grab those numbers and insert them into your uh, linear hashing framework or your extendable hashing framework. Compare the two. Uh, see how they compare. Uh, and, and practice that until you feel comfortable performing the operations. The operations that are most uh, common to perform obviously are doing the mod or converting into binary and looking at bits, whichever one feels more comfortable for you. Uh, I feel like uh, some, some of us might prefer to just do mods, others might sort of already feel a bit natural in binary, so converting to binary might be the way to go. All right, uh, hopefully this gave us a little practice working with our linear hashing. Uh, thanks for watching the video and we'll see you again in the next video.